Hey there, I'm Ryan. I'm Will. I'm Ivan. And this is part two of a reaction to ITV's brand new competition show, The Fortune Hotel. This is episode 31 of It's Just a Game. I'm 31, I turned 31 yesterday. Happy birthday, Happy birthday. birthday. I don't want to go into this. Do the podcast, also good news to you, Will. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Hello and welcome to episode 31 of It's Just a Game, the podcast where we watch reality TV so you don't have to. Every week, well, not really every week to be fair, but every once in a while, <laughs> we look at the winning strategies, the best moments, and the most interesting players of your favorite reality TV shows. This week, we return to the second half of ITV's brand new series, ITV One's Response to the Traitors, The Fortune Hotel. My name is Ryan. Uh, also joining me here then is the one and only fortune holder, Ivan. Hello, Ivan. How are you? Hello. Gosh, that's optimistic. No, no fortune here, but I'm great. I've been been uh, uh, on my own. I'm dog sitting and my partner's in Africa. So I've been watching, I've been binge watching Survivor, American Survivor. I've watched 11 series of US Survivor. And let me tell you, you watched five last week. God. I know. I've been uh, very lonely and it just, it just kind of plays. Do you know what I mean? I dream in Jeff Probst right now. I dream in Probst. And let me tell you, this show does not, it starts good and it gets better. Even the bad seasons are great. The only thing is that my God, 20 years ago feels like a very long time ago in society because the homophobia and the racism and the so many, so many morally weird things that they left it on TV are staggering. And this you is forget my... it's America, so this will still be present in 2024. <laughs> yeah, maybe. No, no, I'm, that isn't the case. Although I think actually a few years ago there was, maybe 2019, there was like something that wasn't, wasn't dealt with very well. Anyway, I'm just saying, if you, ever think, if you ever want to go back and binge watch something, US Survivor is really bloody great. Do, you, do, you, do they give you a warning at the beginning about their, their, how their morals will change? Like, you know, when you watch Disney programs and sometimes, and they put at the beginning, like, by the way, we used to be racist. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> 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 they actually do, man. If you go to watch like old Mickey Mouse and stuff, they like a whole like paragraph comes up. And it's like we do not f agree with how we used to think, sort of thing. <laughs> oh, honestly, well, you've heard him. The man who accidentally picked up the early checkout card is here with us. Hello, Wilf. Yeah, hello. How I'm? Um, I'm good. My life's good. I've yeah been binge watching this today and yesterday parts of it um do you know what can i just complain about one thing somebody it. with like adhd that has developed even worse in the last couple of years right <laughs> watching something with fucking adverts yeah oh it, it throws me off i end up walking off and forgetting about the program completely and i'm like shit like and i mean i only watch it on on you know on catch up and i i'm posh so i've got itvx premium oh of course you so have. I didn't have the ads <laughs> but from what I understand, watching it live was basically some adverts with a slight side of the Fortune Hotel in the background every once in a imagine, while. Imagine having Studio Lambert, right? So when they make the traitors, right, and you have the cliffhangers at the end of every episode, it was like that every 15 minutes. Oh. I was like, for fuck's sake. And then they go back over the scene when they get back. It's so oh. infuriating. I mean, everyone says Linear is dead, and it is, because we're not used to watching adverts anymore. Like, I don't watch any shows on ITV. I don't watch any shows on, on Channel 4, apart from I did watch Josh Must Win. Um, I watch everything on streaming. And so it's completely alien to me and it ruins the momentum of the show. Yeah. If you haven't watched it, to give you an idea of how bad the ads were, they were about as many ads on ITV's The Fortune Hotel as they were shots of Scotland in The Traitors. <laughs> and you know, you know, but I the mean, thing is, hang, like, on, hang on, hang on, hang on, before we move on, wasn't every shot a shot of Scotland, Ryan? <laughs> yeah, technically, yeah. <laughs> Don't bring your logic into this, Ivan Press. <laughs> But the thing is, like, it would go into an advert. I'd pick my phone up, get scrolling and, like, looking at stuff. And then all of a sudden, I've missed, like, another 10 minutes. And I'm like, shit, I've missed... Cheers for that ice cream, ice man. Ice cream? The ice cream, <laughs> man. The ice cream man's just blaring, cream it, <laughs> blaring it down the street. Can it's I get a cone with a flake, please? <laughs> Can I get a 99 flake for a four pound? <laughs> yeah, inflation's um, really bad these days. <laughs> but look, uh, you guessed it. We're about to discuss the Fortune Hotel. Now, as always, I must give you the usual warning. We are entering a spoiler zone. If you have not seen the entirety of Series 1 of the Fortune Hotel, go away and come back when you're done if you've seen it stay right here 
And because we are the show where we watch Rice TV so you don't have to, usually Ivan is here to remind you of everything that's gone down in the series on his recurring segment that he has definitely prepared this week and he's definitely not about to improvise. Ivan, wink, wink, what's been going on, Ivan? Right. That, right. Well, in the second half, right, okay. So, uh, yes. Uh, second half. <laughs> Great summary. Thank you so much, Ivan. Now let's move on to this <laughs> You always went full Boy Johnson for a second here. Oh, yes, well. Uh, six <laughs> remaining couples. Joe and Will, Anne and Michael, Tommy and Scott, Sam and Aisha, Cherish and Jay, and another mystery couple who I haven't written down do battle in a series of repetitive tasks. Now, listen. I wasn't paying full attention to all of the tasks because I do think they shot their ball early and they became less and less interesting until perhaps the last episode. We'll get to that. But essentially, Mm. they carried on voting each other out. Uh, There was a 2v3 uh, alliance where Joe and Will and Adam and Michael, who held the power for the first half of the game, uh, suddenly became became outnumbered. Um, They eventually got taken out. Joe and Will survived till the final day. We had Joe and Will... At Sam and Aisha and Cherish and Jay. It would be ent- very boring to say all the comings and goings of the case, but let's just say that Cherish and Jay held the power for the second half of the game, held the money into the final episode, and in a completely random 50-50 guess, Joe and Will switched into it in a secret challenge, held onto it in the final uh, Lady Luck bar, and won. Uh, and that is what happened in the show. <laughs> Honestly, excellent summary. Now, look, I know every time we discuss a new series and we get to the final, everyone is bursting at the seams to discuss the outcome of the show. And I make you wait and I say, we'll get back to the winners in the final moment. And you hate me for that. It happens every time. And this time, we will do things different. Let's start with the winners then. What, so we're doing it backwards? We're doing it backwards. Okay, go on. Will and Joanne. We were right. The edit wasn't particularly subtle about it. It turns out they weren't trying to mislead us. The press pack wasn't subtle about it. They did have two pages in the press pack and there was a giveaway. They were the winners all along. As I predicted, lads, I win. Yeah, I win. you did win. But can I say the edit did mess with us a little bit because they showed Cherish. Is it? They yeah. looked so weak at the beginning. They looked like they were get well, they were quite weak and they showed it quite a lot and they were, they became quite strong when they started to get power, which I quite yeah. liked. They really came out and they actually tried some ball strategies that in some cases paid off and in some cases didn't. And I really respected them for that. They were really good players to actually see and I'm very pleased they made it so far. Yeah. Um, Cherish and Jay's best strategy, I think, episode seven, they swapped out of the 50k to take back some paper. They, they could have even done even better <laughs> by switching out the 250k to take the card, um, checkout card. I think people started to figure out, the players started to figure out by the end of the series that the power was holding the card. But genuinely, the fact that um, quite a few times Joe and Will held the early checkout card and used it to knock out one of their rivals, even when they were forced to knock out their own alliance members Mm. of Adam and Michael. And I think Cherish and Jay picked that up too late, right? They, second half of the game, they held the power and they kept giving the early checkout cards to their rivals. And I think in the end, that was strategically what what did them over. There's so many flaws in the strategies in different players. I think, like, Will, obviously, Will... um... And his mum did really, really well, right? Really, really well. Did they? But, uh, yeah, no. But when you well, they, well, they, they did. They won. But um, <laughs> they got, they won, but they got lucky. Yes, yeah, yeah, they mean, did, was, yeah. But the worst yeah. thing for me was when you play a game like that. They made their alliance so abundantly clear that yeah. people knew they were in alliance, and they're just going to swap the money between each other. And then one, when you do that you're looking for you you become a target right and they made themselves a massive target no one even liked them for the last like three episodes like yeah. everybody yeah. just hated them until the final episode and you heard their story where i had a little tear they that was like oh my god that was the point where they were like actually they've just been playing the game and they realized mm-hmm. that it is just a game well, to me there was such like a, something that's become a slightly annoying tv trope you build an edit around some people becoming villains everyone in like in the cast doesn't like them and then you get to the last episode and you have this moment where they casually get invited by producer to sit down around the table so they can each share the really emotional reason why they need to two hundred fifty thousand pounds yeah i'm gonna sound like a monster but i'm just like get on with it I, I just want to see who wins the money but they did feel like a race across the world cast and this became more and more mm. apparent through the season they'd cast it as a race across the world cast. And so Joe and Will, yeah, their story was incredibly sad, definitely tear jerking. It was, yeah. And fair play to them because they, they, you know, they'll really use that money well. But like, 
the way they revealed it, and as you say, the way that they went, oh, these guys are bad. Oh, you assholes for hating these people. They actually, they actually lost a family member. Um, is is like it's the oldest trick of the book. And do you think? They're told not to talk about that sort of stuff beforehand because, you know, it's like, save it. Oh, by the way, if you've got a sad story, just save it just in case you get in the final. <laughs> it's like... I think they just probably told them to say it again in the final. You know, I talked about my mum loads during my confessionals and they didn't put any of it in. It just wasn't a narrative they wanted to show. Like when I was crying on that final day, when I was in the thing crying, it's because ba- I was talking about my mum. But like that didn't need to be the thing that I was crying about. So as far as they were concerned, that didn't need to come into it. And like, that's all right. They choose when they want to show the thing, when they want to mm. jerk your tears, so to speak. I guess the, the annoying thing is it kind of works and then we feel a lot less bad about them winning the money. I would have been quite annoyed about them winning the money when we get to the final episode because I thought they were getting really cocky and a little bit insufferable, a little bit... There was just a little bit too much hubris, uh, mm-hmm. particularly on Will's side. And in their story, at least, made me feel a lot better about them winning the money. So, you know, I think the producers kind of almost had to put this in. I think also... A big mistake that they made tactically, and, and, and actually um, Adam and Michael were doing the same thing in their alliance of the four of them. They were chasing the money. And apart from the 10K each night, which, yeah, I understand why you'd want that. Um, chasing the money feels like such a bad idea because it telegraphed to everyone else where the money was. There was that um, swapping ceremony on maybe episode five or six when the yeah. same briefcase, the briefcase with the money in it, changed hands four times. They gave it away. And it absolutely telegraphed it to the point where they had no tactical advantage anymore. Swaps are so common Think about the last episode. It literally doesn't matter what what you start that episode with. It only matters about what you think other people are going to do. Everyone knew who had it pretty much every episode. Everyone also knew who had the card pretty much every episode. So the big tactical mistake that they made and other people, but them so much, was to chase that money. They need instead to chase the card. And that's like, I think once people made that distinction, they can Mm -hmm. play better. Did you feel like, like we're talking about swapping cases in the final, right? Sam and Aisha, yeah, they had no chance of winning it in the, when they were after that mission. They had zero chance. There's yeah. impossible they could have won it. Like, well, yeah, completely impossible. They last. They... The, yeah, but the thing is, when you think if Will swapped with, with uh, Cherish or with uh, Sam, yeah, like there was no way Sam and that could have got the, got the money. So Will and Jay had the money. So, that, so they, Will and Joe, so they could have. Uh, swapped with Will and Joe. Um, and then the other two could have not swapped. I'm not, there's no reason why that would have happened. Like, tactically, they would never have won. But mathematically, yeah, yeah they could. They could have just... If, if it went swap with Will and Joe, mm. and then Cherish, Cherish and Jay went no, and then for some reason Joe and Will said no, then they would have won. Yeah, but that was the, the likelihood. It was unlikely, yeah. But yeah, but... But I felt sorry for them sitting there because I was like, they're yeah. sitting there thinking, oh, we've still got a chance to win. I was like, there's no way you're going to win. No. But they knew from the end of the big, from, from the big end of the big task. Like we already said, we, we knew this from the first episode we recorded last week. We were like, it's all about the last task. It's all yeah. about who wins that away day task and who gets the final mm. pick in the end. Well, I guess what was interesting was the producers sort of getting involved and making the last swap a really secret swap. Um, and that, I guess removed at least for the players that element of oh if we come last we're done the players it sort of puts the players into a blind spot and re-adds some jeopardy into the game we got some tension till the very last minute which i really liked look if, you, if you're allowed to see which uh briefcase you swap into then one of the three players is always going to have solved the game because you only need to, obviously you only need to see two of the three cases to know what's in all three of them yeah so you never want to go into that final bar with someone knowing how to win Actually, as it went, with Joe and Will winning both tasks on that day, they had it down to a 50-50 game because they knew that they didn't have the case to start off with. Yeah. And they had the last pick. So in the end, all that strategy, which some points during the series was really good, all that strategy came down to a random 50-50 pick for Joe yeah. and Will based on social cues. If uh, there had been different winners on both different tasks, it would have been a much more interesting final episode. And I actually think for that reason, the final episode fell a tiny bit flat because mm-hmm. all the strategy that built up to it became a coin flip. That's part of my complaint with the final episode. It's the yeah. fact that effectively, after a good series that's quite good on strategy, the outcome was effectively luck-based. And it's just not very satisfying, you know. It's To be honest, I really, really did not like the last challenge. It just reminded reminded me of like... It just, I don't know. I was just bored of it. It's a pretty standard treasure hunt. It's a, it's another, you yeah. know, competitive reality TV classic. I thought, I thought the lockbox one earlier in the episode was way better than that. The lockbox was cool. 
I liked that. It was really, really good. And then, but do you know what? One of the things about this whole series is I feel like I really enjoyed it at the beginning when people were so, they didn't know what was in any case and all of that. And then once it gets to the last five couples, everybody sort of knows where the money is and knows where everything is. Yeah. And I like the spontaneity of like swapping the case, not knowing what you're going to get all the time. Mm. Uh, where that lost that towards the end you're bang on like it got less and less interesting as they were able to follow it more but the other solution to that is having more swaps then everyone's clueless and it's like well it's just a guess it's just deal or no deal yeah so i think i think there was how do you find the middle ground between i don't think you can it's a tight spot for producers because yeah. if you add some randomness then you just effectively make the first few episodes useless because it doesn't matter because it will come back to like later and if you take out the randomness then you put at least one group of players in a really strong competitive advantage, which makes the game quite unbalanced. At the end, I think they should bring everyone back and they should do this mad challenge. And then people were at the top, like people lived in the penthouse and then some people live in... <laughs> and some people rise and others fall. Um, and Greg James comes out of nowhere, like on a, on a jet ski. Oi, we need to pick up on the little little anecdote. That is it an anecdote that they she, he called out Gloria? I love that. He was like, is that Claudia's, is that Claudia's <laughs> yacht? When he was looking through the binoculars on the boats. Yeah, I love that's that. That's so good. Which is um, ridiculous because everyone knows Claudia's walk is in the Mediterranean, not in, uh, in the Caribbean. <laughs> Come on. Oh. Um, they could have done more with the, with the format, I think. And if they do a second series, I'll have two. There's things they could do. Like, for example, right? How cool would this be? Uh, y- you, for some reason, you win a challenge, are given a card, right? And it says um, Adam and Michael on it, right? And it says, put this in your suitcase. If... At the end of the day, Adam and Michael open the case and see their own name. You get one free swap tomorrow, right? So you can like you can give people missions in like that are about so, yeah side missions side missions about who ends up with which case, right? You, you like a, you know you know like shoplifting when you open when you steal loads of money from a bank and you open it and like weird purple uh, powder dies yeah, your yeah. face. You know that you've all experienced that before. That kind of thing. Like, <laughs> yeah. You can always have trap cases, right? Where if you can get the trap case into the per- into the someone else's hands when they open it that night, then and it wouldn't always be the purple dust, but you get the idea, like that kind of a feeling. Then you get loads of new stuff. Yeah, like something like oh, you'd have to go last. To, you're going to have to go last tomorrow because somebody gave you the purple dye or something. I think there's so much you can build on the concept. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do you think they'll do another series? Hundred percent. Mm. Well, I really hope so. I mean, I'll be honest. What's the ratings like? Did you have a look? It's not been great. At the end of the day, uh, I mean, part of that will probably come down to marketing and just being a little bit unlucky. It's a summer. Everyone's going out and enjoying the weather. But at the end of the day, it's an excellent series. Series one also really put a really nice groundwork, which you can build on. So you can add all these complexities I've mentioned in the series two. You can't really do that in a series one because otherwise people are going to say, oh, the concept is confusing. The concept's got too many layers. You need something quite nice and easy in series one, kind of like Survivor. Mm-hmm. And then in series two, you can build on it, bring it back and start going a little bit crazy with the twists um and for that reason i really hope it comes back yeah i really enjoyed it no i really enjoyed it i really did i think like i said earlier i really enjoyed the first half a lot more than the second half and i feel mm. like will and will and joe it got a bit boring um mm. i knew what was gonna it was so much easier for people to follow and i didn't like that I like when it's like the the whole point of the traitors right why it was so good is because you're watching people not know what's going on and it mm. makes them all go a bit manic. And mm. that, I love that when Will and Joe lost their alliance and then yeah. they tried to bring on Sam and that. I like that little bit because then they yeah. had that sort of power. Sam and Aisha had that power. It became of, all a human game. That penultimate episode was a lot more human, yeah. And particularly yeah. when it was, yeah, when it was the, the episode, I think, and the penultimate one, episode six, it would have been when there were five couples and it was like, it's whoever is 3v2. And uh, yeah, as you say, trying to win over Sam and Aisha, who like were like, yeah, of course, we're with you. And then the, maybe the best tactical move of the entire game swapped their case with uh, Adam and Michael, meaning that the final action Joe and Will could take was either to knock themselves out or to knock Adam and Michael out. That was a, that was like a beautiful bit of TV. That was maybe the best for me, the best moment of the series. And this was mm. from a, a, a pair, Sam and Aisha, who had kept their case. Pretty much every single episode. And I was like, oh, boring. They'll never do anything with it. Just keep their case. And they just do this one thing, totally, totally digging the nail. I thought that was a really, really cool moment. I love that. More of that, I think. I think, I think yeah. one of the ways you sort of obfuscate everything at the end and make the end like a real thrill is just basically have some sort of challenge, some sort of concept where the suitcases can really change hand like half a dozen times. You need so many swaps 
that yeah. it becomes think, really tense. I think earning swaps, honestly, I think earning swaps through the series and then spending them when you get when you want to spend them is a really fun idea. Now, obviously, you don't want to have it where no one swaps the first six episodes because episodes, they will keep them to the end. But like, yeah. oh, tonight, you've got two swaps. You get to swap second and sixth. Oh, you, I, I traded my swap tonight for a swap tomorrow. Like, do it like the NFL draft, right? Where it's like, oh, cool, I got last swap tonight. But instead, I'm going to buy my, my alliance from someone else and, like, get two tomorrow. Well, it's like getting the thing at Survivor, isn't it? It's like getting the icon or whatever it's called. Yeah, exactly. um, the immunity, the immunity the icon. The icon, yeah. <laughs> 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 Wait, one thing I was going to say, with the editing, right? You know they had this, they had that thing where they had to write down people's names and it was like who who's who's the most fun right Mm. and it went to um cherish and that yeah and i've just seen everybody hate on them the whole time near enough and i'm like they didn't show them being the funnest Mm. and it didn't make sense to me it just some of them questions were a bit like i haven't seen that my complaint with this challenge is that in the penultimate challenge the producers rocked up and were like yeah to be fair joanne and sam are all drama until the final we need to keep them and so there's this case of what i think is insanely blatant producer manipulation uh where in the challenge where they run on the boat answering questions and if you get it wrong you gotta jump up the boat mm. there's only one pair that knows uh that they too have one person who voted for will being the biggest snake and so they're the only couple who can know that the number is not going to be six it's going to be seven yeah and that i get that i know what you mean insane now. like it's such blade manipulation it's such I did love that he hissed though when they, when his name came back. He went in. <laughs> yeah, then he can I like that. He can go on Instagram and make uh, make ads and say, "Hey, what's up? I'm Will. I'm uh, <laughs> I'm uh, Britain's biggest snake." <laughs> Ouch! <laughs> it's okay. Like, I'm did, not judging if you liked into shots. How did they? How did they look at that episode before they filmed it and went, "Yeah, two challenges, both of which is going to be writing down people's names." I would have fucking loved it if someone had to jump off a cliff or something. You know, I guess they were pushed off a boat, but come on, uh, like, yeah. it's like just... maybe maybe like add an element, like you've got to answer the questions by like stabbing the person you think it is or something. You know, yeah, like... give us a, like just give us a popping balloon or give us I don't know, give us like <laughs> an actual snake, give us something. It just felt so like. And also the final, yeah. How did they get, yeah? Did you see how far away the boats were from this island, right? Mm. You're telling me that they didn't finish in sort of time where they could see one another at some point. Like, it was ridiculous. They'll have staggered starts or something. No, either that or the finish line would have been somewhere else. And then whoever won would have then been taken um, one by one to the thing to film that scene. Because I was thinking the same thing. Yeah. Was like, Welcome to the podcast where we destroy the magic of Rossi TV one, by, one episode <laughs> by episode. And you know, the producers probably went, can you just hold them in the middle of the sea for a minute? Let, let, we're just transferring these lot around. And I was like, <laughs> okay, all right, Joe and Will, so we're going now. So we're going to go over to the beach. But it's, I think the same, <laughs> the same thing was probably true with the room service challenges as well. I imagine they all happened um, sequentially at different times because... How were Cherish and Jay surprised they hadn't won the lockbox challenge? They picked up the phone, they rung someone, and then were told, you haven't won. And Cherish was like, oh, what? I thought we'd won. Well, surely they'd know if they'd won, because it would have been Stephen Mangan on the other side, being like, yeah, you won. So, like, <laughs> Instead, they went to some random girl at the switchboard, being like, Fortune Hotel, can I help? <laughs> can I say, the funniest one for me, yeah, uh, is, you know when you make a lie and it's so fucking bad, because, like, and Liz Will goes, yeah, we ran out of time, we we were just looking for a key to the box the whole oh, time. such you know? a bad liar. <laughs> when they asked about who won that challenge, you went, I don't know, we, we couldn't even find the key. I was like, oh, fuck off, bro. There was another time they were caught in a lie where they were like, where they were trying to tell Cherish and Jay that, oh, we just picked a number about a hat, we didn't even, uh, yeah, and then they're like, oh, so you have to do it. <laughs> the thing is we all know in this sort of shows it's actually like everyone loves to say they can tell liars they can read people they can tell yeah. when somebody's lying and it turns out it's false and then will comes in and you realize actually you know what i can tell when this guy's lying because he's shit at it mm. he's so bad at lying oh do you know the guy was only 19 bro he does look uh, like in his late 20s like and the other was like what but listen you think you're good liars. You think you can get a lie past me. You think we can make a more dramatic season finale than they did. It's time to put your money where your mouth is. I have a, a DM conversation with Will's wife. We chat quite a lot. But she, I've been organising with her uh, that she sends you all a little message. Does this mean I need to put on a dramatic game music now? Yeah, could you? Ready? Yeah. Three, two, just... one, now. Okay. Oh, I hate that. 
different one, please. Now. <laughs> Much better. Thank you. Okay, well, <clears throat> here's how it works. Uh, Wilf's wife has texted you all. Oh, you may not have her number saved, Wilf, but um, uh, that is your <laughs> wife. Uh, has sent you all uh, a text message. It either says 250k or empty case. There is no well, check is I've got to say that my phone is Domino's Pizza so that my girlfriend <laughs> doesn't find <laughs> out. <laughs> it may say Domino's <laughs> <laughs> I, I really like that advert. Yeah. I don't know all of them. Mm. I find them really catchy. Yeah, I find it, aren't they? Okay, uh, so everyone has, but I just guess. not when it's interrupting Fortune Hotel. <laughs> Again, <laughs> I'm going TVX Premium. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> everyone has uh, either empty case or 250k. Only one person has 250k. The other two of us have an empty case. We will all get a chance to uh, to switch or keep it. Uh, we're going to decide who does that by a quick game of rock, paper, scissors. So, um... Season finale of the Squid Games! <laughs> yeah, there we go. It's, it's season finale of Squid Game plus season finale of the Fortune Hotel. <laughs> all right, so we will uh, take each other on. First of all, I'll play Wolf. Um, it's going to be one, two, three shows. It's a rock, paper, scissors show. Ready? Rock, paper, scissors show. Yeah, oh, I win that. Bastard. Uh, I did paper, Wolf did rock. And then, Wolf, you do Ryan. Ready? Rock, paper, scissors show. Okay, Wilf on that. beats Ryan, so I think we've got the answer there. Uh, oh, yeah, that's fine. Ryan? Yeah, could that work? Yeah. Okay, so Ryan, you're going to reveal first. Wilf, you're going to reveal second. I'll reveal. Reveal or reveal. switch? Or switch. switch or keep the same. Sorry, I'm no Stephen Mangan, guys. I'm trying my best. Ryan, take it from the top. <laughs> uh, let me just check where I've got in my suitcase. Yeah, just check. Just have a look and see. <laughs> the, the purple spray went off in your eyes. <laughs> <laughs> uh... I think I'm going to swap my case with Ivan. Okay. You now have whatever I started with, and I have uh, whatever you started with. Wilf, it is your turn. Well, it's, yeah. I'm going to swap with Ryan. Ryan, I'm taking your case. You do you, mate. Then I will... I'll keep I'll keep what's in my case. Okay. Which so means Ivan had the early checkout card. <laughs> <laughs> so let me tell you what just what? happened there. I came further in the challenge. I had 250k in my first suitcase. Did you? You busted! I thought Ivan had it! No, then I win, because you swapped with me and no one else swapped. I won the 250k! No, I swapped I swap with Ryan. Yeah, but Ryan had already taken my money and I had nothing. I was sitting there, I was sitting there with, with nothing in my case and I was watching you, Ryan, and I was like, if he's not got the money, he's going to try and make it look like he does by holding it. Then you swapped and you swapped with me, knowing I went last, and I think that meant you wanted to give me the power to swap it back. Then when Wilf swapped, but swapped with you, I realised that's because he thought I started with the money. So I was like, yeah. absolutely fucking, this is, this is easy. I was 75% that I had yeah. money, hence sticking with it. All I can say is that that was great TV. Some triple, some like 4D chairs being played here. We're yeah. going to get more ratings in that voice note. <laughs> <laughs> this, this, this long voice note conversation that is called a podcast. <laughs> the big issue, I suppose, with this, this format particularly, is that we don't know what's in our cases, so we can't do the big reveal. We have to tell each other what's in our cases. <laughs> but, yeah. Honestly, ITV1, call us, we'll play the game. <laughs> but well, look, 2.0 want to zero in on now is just... General strategy, in terms of general strategy, is having an alliance actually a mistake? I'm just thinking about this because I actually don't think it is, but the way they played it, the alliance was their downfall in that, you know, they got a little bit cocky there and then people felt left out and Sam and Aisha had to be brought in. I mean, I don't know. It, it, it was quite messy. And I think the execution of the alliance was really bad. But I still do believe this is a game where if you can have a secret alliance, at least leak about it, it's a, it's good news. Uh, I, don't, I don't know. How do we feel about this? Alliances in this game, do they make sense, Wolf? Yeah, I think <clears throat> I completely agree. I feel like if you have the alliances, you need to keep them under wraps. And if you don't want to make alliances, you need to sort of use... They, uh, what, who was the guy with the bald head who got, they were, they were fourth out, I think. Moby? What were they? 
No, Moby, who's that? <laughs> just making people up. Paul, is it Paul? Is it Paul? Oh, yeah, Paul and Mark, yeah. Yeah, so I'm just making they up. didn't really have any... Uh, <laughs> 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 so basically, them guys, they did Yeah, John and Ivan, yeah. Yeah, John... Oh. <laughs> wait, did you know... Wait, sorry, I've got to say this. Did you know... That Kyle's in the world, I don't know if you know this, try to break a record of the same the people in one place with the same name. <laughs> and that loads of people called Kyle came, came there and they didn't break the world record because the world record is held by Ivans. Yes! <laughs> like a th- over a thousand Ivans met in one place or something. Yeah. Or something that was stupid. <laughs> anyway. Fair enough. Getting back to players. So Scooby Doo <laughs> the Loch Ness Monster. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they didn't see, they didn't have any out, like outwards these are my alliances, these are my alliances, they sort of just used the Halo effect and was like friendly with everyone. Yeah. And I think that will really work in this game that as well. gameplay from Melby and Spice, yeah. yeah. Melby and <laughs> Spice? <laughs> the fuck? No, no, I think, okay, so a majority of alliances are all very well, but there's a lot of moving parts and it's very easy. Like, it's not, it's, it's not a vote. The reason why you have a majority alliance is so that you get, like, democratic power, which is just isn't possible. So I get the idea of having an alliance, and if you keep it a secret, that's all very well. And actually, Joe and Will had a really cool moment in one episode, I think the episode before um, Adam and Michael went home, where they could have made it look like Ad- Joe, they weren't working together. The thing is, it was so obvious that they were working together. Yeah, because they were training up together at breakfast every morning. Exactly. <laughs> They're having breakfast together, they got in every van. And whispering. They got in every van together. Look, if you're going to start an alliance, you best make sure it's a majority alliance. If you start a minority alliance and advertise it, you will get taken out. There is no power there at all. Um, I, think, I think the best thing to do would have been to legitimately... Uh, using wolf style levels of ethical manipulation, make every single <laughs> other partner couple think that you're their number one going into the final. But that could backfire so fast. Oh, absolutely. Oh, 100%. But it's way easier to do that than to take a minority alliance that everyone knows about into yeah. the final. Because it's just not <laughs> Do you know what? Can we just say the, the best thing that we've learned from this show is that Joe has a tattoo of Cherry on her bum. Like, that's it. Like, that, that was the, my favourite moment. There you go. Let's go. <laughs> like, bring it back next season. Bye. <laughs> but look, I guess that's uh, our review of The Fortune Hotel. I believe we liked it. We want more of it. Uh, again, ITV1, call me. I will take that free holiday uh, to the Caribbean, uh, and I will play those challenges as long as there's no sort of running involved. Um, <laughs> if it's a vomiting challenge, however, if it's a vomiting challenge, I've got you. Uh, but before we move on, I believe uh, I'm getting a I'm getting a call from a recurring challenge here. Yes, hello. Yes. Oh. The recurring challenge is here. They're ready to be let in. Ivan, do you want to open the door? Yeah. <laughs> Ivan's like, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> The recurring challenge where we go over who won. The rec- oh, oh, we yeah. Okay, sorry. <clears throat> well, in sixth position, uh, with uh, Jen and Sue, Wilf. Wow. In fifth, sorry. In fifth position, uh, with Scott and Tommy. With no, actually, Adam and Michael came fifth, and there was Ryan. Fourth was Scott and Tommy. That was me. This is very professional. In third position and second position, there is no, they don't care who came second and third. They're both losers in my eyes. Were Ryan and Wilf, meaning the winner, of course, as it always is and always will be, was me with Joe and Will. So congratulations. Proof once again that you can't be taking a risk. You've got to go for the basic and boring option. <laughs> <laughs> Shameful. But look, that's uh, our review done. Uh, the recurring challenge is leaving the house now. Yeah, just close the door behind you, please. Uh, oh, recurring challenge. Recurring. I thought you said the requiem <laughs> challenge, and I thought I had to make it. I had to do a eulogy. I was like, well, "Who's is there someone at my door?" For a minute, I thought you orchestrated like a visitor. I was like, "Who's, who's here?" Anyway, anyway, we, we're going to go now, guys, because we're going to go on TikTok and stalk someone. Goodbye. <laughs>
<laughs> and on that note, uh, we're going to go stalk Will's boyfriend. But yeah, well, that's it then for a review of the Fortune Hotel. Um, we'll be back very soon to discuss uh, more. I mean, I know last time we said we'll be back very soon. We were not back very soon. But this time there's a lot of very exciting TV on the horizon this summer. The Traitors US is coming soon. Series two of The Mall is dropping on Netflix. And of course, the most exciting saga of this year, the, Jenny Le- the general election is on the way. I feel like we, need to, we should be making a Jenny Leck podcast. Look. 100%. Let's do it. Come on. Jenny Leck all but, the way. But treating it like, we're treating it like it's The Apprentice again. Yeah. Well, it's all <laughs> full, of, full of its self-entitled idiots. How, so I suppose it's pretty how, how, <laughs> how do you get votes? How do you get votes? You need votes. Um, how about we just say all 18-year-olds have to go to war? Yeah, let's do that. That will get votes. <laughs> Perfect. No notes. Well, on that note, <laughs> uh, we will be back soon. Uh, this time for real. Um, unless I get hit by a bus while cycling to work again. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> on that note, we'll be back very soon. Uh, my name is Ryan. You can follow me on Instagram at uh, I love you, Stephen. My name's Will. You can follow me at what's that thing that they have that like, that card that they have on Fortune Hotel when they leave early. That's my app. And I'm Ivan, and you can find me on LinkedIn at bring back national service and they won't be able to vote. <laughs> 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 and here is see you very soon and goodbye. <laughs>